Hello. My name is Demaya Rogers, 12th grade counselor here at Eastside High School. Welcome and congratulations for making it to your senior year. This year will be filled with many emotions and feel like quite the roller coaster. My goal is to help students, parents, guardians, and family navigate this time so that we will be successful and we're all celebrating our students and their hard work in May. Let's meet the members who are here to help us achieve our goals. While there are many people here to support you during this time, I wanna highlight some important members located in the guidance office. Here you will find my name and contact information. Mr. Hathaway is our new college and career advisor. He will be working a lot with our students, helping them to locate post-grad opportunities, whether that be in the workforce, military, or college. He can assist with applications, scholarships, college visits, and any other questions you may have regarding future opportunities. Please reach out to him to schedule a meeting and get connected. Ms. Vaughn is our records clerk. She deals with transcripts a lot. We will visit this again, but she will assist with making sure those are sent to the appropriate location. She is also the person you will see if you are in need of an ACT or SAT fee waiver. Ms. Starr is our attendance clerk. She is the person who receives the notes that are turned in prior to first period to excuse student absences, and she will enter them into Infinite Campus. She is also who will take the excuses for college visits. For the Newton County Schools Handbook, seniors are allowed up to three college visits in preparation for post-secondary education. As long as a note is provided upon return, the senior is not counted absent, but is responsible for all assignments. It is important to get and stay connected during your senior year. This year will be filled with lots of information going around and it is critical that you are aware of how to receive and access this information. Mr. Chur will release information via email, remind, and social media. Our remind code can be found on the screen. If you are not already enrolled in the Remind class, please go ahead and join. This is for students and families and a great way to see the information in one location. You can also scan this QR code that will take you directly to the EHS website, which houses more information. Please follow us on social media and be on the lookout for Mr. Chur's Eagle News. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to any of us on your senior team. Let's talk a little bit about academics. We are almost to the finish line, but don't take your foot off the gas just yet. We expect our seniors to be responsible and stay on top of their grades and what's going on in their classes. As their support, it is important that we aid them in this process. Ask your students about their classes, how they're going and their grades. We distribute progress reports and report cards throughout the year. And you can also view their academic standings on Infinite Campus via Parent Portal. Make sure they're checking in with their teacher if they need assistance or do not understand the subject or topic being discussed. Their teachers are here to help, but won't know there's a concern if it's not brought to their attention. Set goals with your students that they are able to achieve throughout this year that will help them stay on track. Attendance. We encourage our students to be at school every day. If they are not, it can be a significant detriment to their success. We know sickness happens and want you to stay home if you're not feeling well, but please remember students must acquire enough seat time in their courses to receive credit at the end of the year. Students receive five parent notes for the year. We encourage students to use them wisely. Credit recovery. If your student is making up credits that they need for graduation, they'll be placed in credit recovery to complete their courses via Edgenuity. I encourage seniors to try and complete this during their first semester if possible. We don't want you to lose focus on the courses if your schedule, but as the second semester approaches and there are more things to focus on, the stress levels may begin to rise. Allowing the classes to drag deep into the second semester may cause them to fall off the student's radar. We don't want that, so let's encourage them to finish these courses and stay on top of their workload. Transcripts. This will be the magic word during your senior year. Students will begin asking for these for many reasons. It's okay to look at the student's transcript and see the progress they've made thus far. It outlines the classes they have taken up to this point, credits received, and their GPA. This can be found in Infinite Campus. This year, there will be different kinds of GPAs that students will focus on. Cumulative is the GPA that will be on the transcript. Every class they have taken in high school will be there. Um, the cumulative GPA is based on a 100 point scale. Hope GPA is a completely different GPA. Georgia Student Finance Commission uses this for eligibility for Hope and Dell Miller Scholarship. For Hope, you have to have a 3.0 GPA or higher. For Zell Miller, you have to have a 3.7 GPA or higher, as well as minimal testing scores. Hope GPA can only be seen in Georgia Futures. Your student will need to log in or create an account in order to view this. 
I would encourage viewing this early so students are able to see where they stand and the work that needs to be done in order to remain or become eligible. We don't want to relieve any potential scholarship money on the table. You can also view their HOPE GPA report card and it will show you which classes are factored into this GPA, but it's typically core cast classes, world language, and four science options. Courses that are not included are high school classes taken prior to entering high school. For example, if your student took physical science and or algebra in eighth grade, those will not be factored into the HOPE GPA, but will be factored into the academic GPA. Your academic GPA is typically what colleges use for admission. Once they receive your transcript, they look at it and they calculate their own GPA and include the courses that they want, which is usually core classes in world language and is typically on a 4.0 scale. So just make sure your students understand the difference between the GPAs. There's a way to convert your GPA from 100 point scale to 4.0. If you visit collegeboard.org or Google GPA conversion, they have many calculators that will translate it for you. We also need to briefly discuss the difference between weighted and unweighted GPA. Weighted is referring to extra points given for AP and dual enrollment classes and what used to be given for accelerated. You receive 10 additional points for dual enrollment, 10 for AP, and it used to be five for accelerated. The cumulative GPA that we calculate is weighted. Most colleges look at weighted. Unweighted would be if they remove those additional points and then calculate the GPA. Some scholarships and colleges will calculate the unweighted GPA, but most of what we see is weighted. It's just important to know the difference. Honor grads. Once you get to the end of the year, if you are distinguished as an honor grad, you will receive a yellow honor stole for graduation in addition to your other regalia items. There are several criteria for this distinction, but the big one is to have a 90 or higher cumulative GPA. We do not round up for this. So if your student has an 89.7, they would not be eligible to be an honor grad. When our students leave for winter break, whatever their grade is in all of their classes will be factored in along with their previous three years and a GPA will be calculated. It's calculated by the county office and they'll release a list of students who qualify as honor grads. So please encourage your students to do their best in these upcoming months, especially if they're teetering right on the border of qualifying GPAs. We typically begin notifying students about undergrad status in March. Georgia Futures. Every 12th grader needs to know how to access their Georgia Futures account. There are many things that they will be dealing with, so make sure this is something that they or you are able to access. I mentioned earlier that their HOPE GPA is something that you will find here, and it's the only place that you are able to see this. They can look at the detailed HOPE GPA report and rigor requirements to make sure they are satisfying that criteria. In order to be considered for this scholarship, a student will have to have four classes of rigor. It does not have to be AP. There are many courses that fall into this category, and you can access this list in your Georgia Futures account. This is a very important piece of the HOPE and Zell Miller scholarship. Students can research lots of colleges and scholarships based on specific criteria that fits what they are looking for. You can also apply to colleges using this platform and send transcripts. If you are applying to a school in the state of Georgia, you can log into your account and request that your transcript be sent to that college or university. It can be private or public, but it does have to be located in Georgia. Students can do this on their own, so it's a great tool to have. We talked earlier about the importance of staying connected and taking advantage of opportunities provided. There's lots of information available for college applications, financial aid, SAT and ACT, and although we have lots of knowledge in this area, things can change. So instead of always just giving the information, I like to give the source of information in case something does change. You are able to access it outside of me. I think it's also important for students to learn how to research and find information that is beneficial to them and not just being told things. So I'm sharing a few resources on this slide and the QR codes to be redirected to these slides, uh, sites. Common App. I have linked an information page that has a video helpful for both you and your student. Lots of seniors will use Common App and it's, as it says, a common application. They complete one and it can be sent to multiple colleges. Not all colleges in Georgia acknowledge Common App, but there are multiple around the country that do. I have also added a QR code for the HBCU Common App as well. Using this platform allows me to input all the information like transcripts and school profiles once, and it's available for all colleges. It's a great way for students to organize and reduce the redundancy of filling out multiple applications. Not all colleges will use this, but it's an easy to log in and to see who uses it. So use this code to explore. 
Georgia Student Finance Commission. Any financial aid that your student will be receiving, whether for technical college or four-year schools, will be run through GSFC. Hope and Zell Miller go through this as well. Brenda Vaughn is a great resource for anything financial aid. FAFSA is something that you will hear lots about. She's going to be a great resource helping you with this application and many changes that they have made. I don't think there's a question that she doesn't know the answer to, so I wanted to share her contact information so that you can contact her directly and set up an appointment. We also try and have her come in the spring to do financial aid workshops. Find her information on Georgia Futures. FAFSA. Like I mentioned earlier, there have been many changes to this application, but it will be critical application for students attending college. Typically, it will be available October 1st. This is where all of your financial aid for college comes through. Federal, your Hope and Zell Miller scholarships, and the school-based aid will all come through FAFSA. So it's critical that this is completed. There is both a student and parent guardian part. At this time, the application should be available by December 1st but I am including this link so that you are able to check for availability as well. But please use Ms. Brenner Vaughn as a resource to you when completing this step. I have also linked information to Georgia Futures that discusses college and career readiness. On this slide, we will discuss entrance exams. We could spend lots of time here, but I'm going to try and condense it to important time-sensitive information. Are test scores required and what do we need them for? During COVID, rules changed and test optional policies went into place. Some of these policies have remained while others have changed. The USG test optional policy is for all state schools in Georgia, not private schools, but state schools. They have a tiered system. There are, however, three schools that require you to submit to SAT or ACT scores with your application for it to be considered. Those are University of Georgia, Georgia Tech, and Georgia College and State University. The reps will tell you that you have to submit test scores, but this is not saying that a lower test score will be a deal breaker. So please don't let that deter you from applying. Applying to college is a personal process and will be unique to each student. I encourage you to get the facts and don't listen to or compare your standing with others. Make an appointment with Mr. Hathaway or me and we can discuss your goals, your situation, and help you design a plan that's best for you. As stated earlier, the aforementioned schools require test scores to be submitted. The remaining USC schools, USG schools, use a tiered system. Research schools such as Georgia State, Augusta University, if you have a 3.4 GPA or higher, you do not have to submit test scores. You can still submit them if you want, but you do not have to. The next year, comprehensive universities, such as the University of West Georgia and Valdosta State, require a 3.2 for test optional. And state colleges such as Savannah State, North Georgia, and ABAC require a 3.0 GPA for test optional. Let's talk about test registration. You go directly to their website. SAT is College Board, or board and ACT is ACT.org. To register, you have to create an account and go through the process. If you think you may be eligible for a fee waiver, please look into that as um, that will waive your registration fees. See Ms. Vaughn in the guidance department so that she can provide you with the application. Once completed, returned, and approved, she will provide you the code needed to waive this fee. I wanted to share some additional resources with you. USG.edu offers a wide range of information regarding schools in Georgia. It's good to frequently check this resource to see if things have changed. Things like the test optional information can be found here. You can look up colleges, their profiles, and even do a tour. While college visits are permitted, not all students are able to physically attend the campus. This is a great way to see colleges and universities and what they have to offer. You can also check out the degrees that are offered and jobs within that field that might be available to you upon graduation. You can do a cost comparison of different institutions and also start financial mapping. See what Hope and Zill Miller Scholarship will pay for and what costs will be remaining to you. There are many opportunities for scholarships out there, but this helps us with a visual to know what is needed. Students can also use YouTube for virtual tours. The college tour has many videos from different institutions that show students what each school has to offer. Take some time to explore and find the best fit for you. Let's discuss our technical colleges in Georgia. These institutions are becoming more popular and serving each of our students' unique needs. Many students may not see themselves attending a four-year institution, so this is a great tool to help them identify the post-secondary option that best suits them. 
Here, they will find lots of programs leading to certificates and degrees they can complete in as little as six weeks and up to two years at a technical college. It can be used as a standalone degree or a certificate or do your first year or second at a technical college and then transfer to a four-year school. This is another plan that you can sit down and discuss with Mr. Hathaway or myself if you are unaware of what plan may fit you best. With many grants that are available to students, it's almost a free option, which can be very appealing. Not many have on-campus housing, but please use this tool as another option for students weighing their post-graduation option. Here are some upcoming events for our students. Some do require that they register and the link will be provided. Information here has also been added to remind or will soon be added. I have added both mine and Mr. Hathaway's email addresses. Like I mentioned earlier, you can reach out to him or me and we can meet together to discuss your students' needs. Students are also able to request a letter of recommendation for me. Um, they can scan this QR code that is located in the guidance office. It has also been included in Mr. Chur's Eagle News as well as in the class of 2025 Remind. Um, I am asking that students be as detailed as possible when filling out this form. There are a lot of them and one of me, and I want to give them the best letter of recommendation that I can possibly um, provide to them. I'm asking that they submit their forms early. I know that a lot of early applications are taking place right now, but I am requesting two weeks to fill out these um, letters of recommendation for the student. So please, please, please encourage them to submit these forms as early as possible. They only need to fill out this form once. Once they have done so, I will receive it on my end and I will begin writing the letter. If they feel out like they left out some information, they are more than welcome to email me on the side and I will be sure to include that information that they have left off. They can um, receive this letter in three ways. Um, I can email them a copy, I can provide them a physical copy, or I can upload it directly to their Common App. They can distinguish that within the form that they are filling out. Thank you for joining us. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me or anyone in the guidance department.